Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right, so the Memphis Grizzlies got the victory in a thriller at home. 111 109. John Morant got the lay in with one second to go to seal the deal after Anthony Edwards had hit a corner three point shot with, I believe it was four seconds to go or something like that. That was an absolute thriller. We saw a big haymaker after huge haymaker. I am so wiped out by that game that's what playoff basketball is all about ladies and gentlemen that is exactly what it's about those two young teams came out put up a fantastic effort brandon clark is turning into a just a unsung hero in these playoffs 15 huge rebounds and if you look at the stat sheet that's basically where they won getting second chance points getting those offensive glass they killed them on the offensive glass and then 23 turnovers from the Timberwolves you can't win that way there's no way you can win when you turn the ball over 23 times it's impossible um Anthony Edwards chimped in with 22 points as I said that big shot there John Morant had one of the most explosive dunks you'll ever see in your life I think it was somewhere in the third quarter but the team was down 11 and it looked like this, the game was going nowhere and you knew the team needed something to wake them up and it was as if he just understood that and seized that moment about as well as any star I've ever seen. Just knowing that your team needs something. Knowing that the momentum was just flat. And picking it up at that exact moment. And as soon as he did that, I was like, yeah, somehow Memphis is going to win this game. And a lot of things happened. There's been a lot of lead changes, fantastic defense on both sides. But at the end of the day, it just came down to one single play. And John Morant happened to make that play. But they could not have gotten a single thing done if it wasn't for Brandon Clark's rebounding and Brandon Clark's overall effort. He was tremendous. Got to give Patrick Beverly his credit, but I knew that they, the Timberwolves were in trouble when he fouled out with two minutes to go. Because they need him down the stretch of those games. And another thing I thought the Timberwolves should, should have done to help themselves in that game was put Malik Beasley in the game for more shooting down the stretch. Even though Ant-Man hit that three-point shot, they were lucky to have him get it off. I felt like they left shooting on their bench that could have really helped them in that situation as well, but it didn't matter. They made the shot anyway. But all in all, I just feel like those two teams came out and played their hearts out. You know? And I have to say, you know, D'Angelo Russell... He took a shot down the stretch, off the elbow, clanked it real nasty. Maybe he makes that shot and he's the hero. This just takes me back to the conversation I had about these team in the previous game. Coach just needs to reel people in and have a set pecking order for what things are and what things aren't in terms of who should be uh, first, second, third, and etc. Whose team it is, whose it's not. Because to me, that he should have never had to. That that's not that's not the person you want taking that shot. I know he's one of the stars on his team, but I need Ant Man or Carl Anthony Towns to be taking that shot. He had not been shooting like that. He had 12 points on the night. He was not scoring like that. Carl Anthony Towns had just hit a rhythm three. There was a lot of momentum going on, and he just kind of took it upon himself to to take this shot. And like I said, if it falls, you feel great. You're happy that he feels confident to take that shot. You you appreciate that he feels himself to be worthy of taking that shot. But at some point in time, the coach has to has to make sure that that's Carl Towns. Make sure that that's Anthony Edwards because this is your season on the line. This is a pivotal game for the next game is is is, is do or die for whoever loses this game. And you need your most efficient players taking that shot not somebody who's just semi kind of cold this is what i was saying about spencer dinwiddie taking the uh, last second shot in the game three of the dallas series he didn't handle business taking that shot he was cold you need your best players taking your best shot or you need the hottest players taking your best shots when it matters most when my season's on the line i ain't i ain't letting just any old cold hand if he's not especially helpful on defense or rebounding and he's cold he's sitting down the game like this he ain't even out there that's malik beasley you see what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you just, like, I got that right. I'm not saying I, I got the coach's job in my head. But what I'm saying is this. 
that should have been called Anthony Towns. A play should have been running that situation for Anthony Edwards. And as you can see in the following play, Anthony Edwards did hit the clutch shot. So there were a lot of good things that happened down there. But, you know, they just didn't have that one extra guy that could keep Brandon Clark off the glass. You know, it, it, it maybe the coach could have substituted a few other different ways. You know, Nas Reed started off this game very strong. I didn't see enough of him down the stretch. I mean, you got a guy like that who starts a game off playing well and he's giving you a lot. Maybe you try to lean on him a little more. I don't know if he was in foul trouble. I have to check. You know what I mean? I don't know. But you would just think that if ride the hot hand, you know. Because for me, when, when the series is tied 2-2, the way my mind works, it's, it's game seven energy. Because I do not want my back against the wall. I do, want, I do not want you to have my fate in your hands because anything can happen in one basketball game a twisted ankle or some guy has a game of his life that you never heard of you do not want to be on the wrong end of something like that with your season on the line so for me i feel that urgency before that i'm going crazy in game four because i know that if i win this game i at least got true two tries at knocking you off as opposed to your one try at knocking me off so I, I don't know. I just didn't feel like I don't feel like Minnesota's preparation matched the intensity that Pat Beverly brought to team tonight and that some of the players brought to the team tonight. I felt the players played hard. You know, it wasn't that they weren't fighting hard enough. They were just getting outworked. But not by a lot. You know what I mean? It was a lot of hard effort out there. I just think that, you know, you had you just had um Memphis just wanted a little more, man. Brandon Clark was just a little quicker, especially on the offensive glass. So, you know, you got to give John Moran his credit. The man was unbelievable on the stat sheet. You look at his stats, you, that's a superstar personified, showing up in the playoffs at home after talking a lot of that crap. He's still backing it up. And as long as you can back it up, we amused. Nobody ever called out Muhammad Ali for talking crap because he always backed it up. As long as John Morant can continue to win, ain't nobody going to call him out for saying nothing. He can do, say whatever you got to say so long as you collect the rings with it. So that's what I'm saying. It, I, I told y'all, Memphis and six. Memphis and six, it's not because this, these teams are that much different because they've proven to be pretty much equal. I just think that the the coaching edge is the difference, I believe, honestly. What I've seen, from what I've seen, it honestly has come down to just coaching decisions. Taylor Jenkins is doing a better job. And and, and, and that's that's the edge. Because the players, the players are leaving it out there. The youngsters, they're playing without any concern, no conscience. They care. You can see they care. You're looking at Jaron Jackson fouling out again. He's damn near crying over there in the corner. He cares. And that's something else Jaron Jackson got to figure out a way to stay in this series. You got to figure out a way. You 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 getting in, you getting in foul trouble has, is why this series isn't over. Straight up. It's why this series isn't over. <laughs> this should have been in it for Minnesota tonight. But Jaron Jackson has not been able to stay off the state keep from fouling and he hasn't been able to contribute on the offensive end enough if he steps that up in Minnesota this series is over it's a lot of things that contribute to that game and it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be leaning on a lot of different things I don't expect Minnesota to roll over but at the end of the day the reason why I picked Memphis is because they just have the better coach and because of that they should win game six. That's not the only reason as well. As you guys know, we've discussed this. I think Minnesota is slightly less versatile than Memphis. They got one less wingy guy. You know what I mean? In terms of these forwards that can get out to your perimeter. Minnesota is not using Okigi, And I really do think that that's the difference. Believe it or not. That may sound crazy, but I do believe that's the difference. They threw Torian Prince out there. I thought he's played okay. Tony Prince did some good things, did some bad things. He, you know, respectfully, he's an average player. Everywhere he goes, he's going to bring what he brings to the table, and that's cool. 
But I think a guy like Okigi is the type of defensive player and rebounding guy that could at least put one more body on Brandon Clark to keep his butt off that glass. That's what Okigi does. That's what he does. So I just don't understand sitting him. I didn't understand sitting McLaughlin, and you saw how fantastic he's been since they've called his number. Anthony Edwards' corner shot that we're talking about, that key play, yeah, that was off of a Jordan uh, McLaughlin bounce pass. He made the key play down the stretch. If Ja doesn't make that layup, it's his playmaking that won the game. And that's what I'm talking about, a guy that they weren't using to start the series. You wouldn't even believe how much production is being left without being used all over these playoffs. I talk about it every every couple hours, you guys know. But either way, I thought that this was a fantastic game. And the series, well, it's up to the, it's up to the Memphis Grizzlies, really, in my mind. Even though it's headed back to the to the Timberwolves arena. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, the Timberwolves have done some things that have shown us they're not the better team. They haven't managed their timeouts properly in this series. They haven't rotated their players in such a way that gives them the best matchups on the floor as well as Memphis has. And that's really the difference. The effort has been there. The star power has been there. But we just haven't seen the attention to the de- attention to detail that Taylor Jenkins is bringing to the table. That's the difference. But I'll tell you, Memphis got away with something tonight. Because Dylan Brooks, you are not getting off the hook on this channel, sir. Was he? Did I see three for twenty-two or something like that? His his shooting numbers were some of the worst shooting numbers you'll see him shoot in these playoffs, and and they, and they better be. You better not get worse than that. The fact that you won this game is something you should be thanking anything you believe in. Your lucky stars, God, or whoever. Dylan Brooks need to be very, very, very appreciative tonight when he lay his head down. Because as bad as he played, ain't nobody going to remember it. Because they got the W. But in a pivotal game four, you play that bad. Most days, most games, you are going to lose. And let me tell you, if you was a Laker, <laughs> you would hear nothing but your name every day. They would be running all of your bloopers from this previous game. You know what I'm saying? Like, not everybody gets treated the same in this league, man. Sometimes circumstances will save you. There's perspective to be understood. Because <clears throat> that 3 for 22? Trey Young's going to get a lot of hell tomorrow for how bad he played in his series. Dylan Brooks ain't going to hear nothing. But let me tell you, Dylan Brooks is just as bad as anybody tonight. Just as bad as anybody. For whatever it's worth, he needs to go, you know, shake that off and do not bring that to Minnesota. Because if he play like that in Minnesota, this series is headed to a seven, straight up. They will not survive two performances like that from him. Absolutely not. So, that's pretty much what I got to say about that, man. Jaron Jackson, if he could stay on the floor, I think they have a much better shot. Carl Towns needs to keep up doing what he's doing. I think he put up good protect production. I think he was good. Continue to try to stay out of foul trouble. Uh, and that goes for everybody. Everybody, you know, foul trouble is a real thing for this both of these two teams. Um, I think it was Minnesota that shot pretty solid from the three point line. I thought that was solid. Just looking at their numbers, I think they were above forty percent. Memphis, not so much, but don't quote me on that. But at the end of the day, when Memphis crashes the glass and forces turnovers in the way that they did tonight. You know, Minnesota turned the ball over 25 times. I don't know how many of those were forced, but when you have that situation in hand, you're going to just control the ball. You got it in your hands off the glass, and you got it in your hands because they're giving it to you. Hard to lose that way. So Minnesota is, you know, it, 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 there's a separation here. I think today we learned who the better team was, to be completely honest with you. That doesn't mean that Minnesota can't win game six. I don't believe that they're cooked. As I've called certain other teams cook, you can tell when certain series are over with. I don't I don't necessarily get that feeling, but I do get the feeling that Memphis understands that in a game like game six, even though it's on the road, they are the better team. They are the better team. They've been the better team all year, but it's not by a large margin. So if they don't play better than they did tonight, they will not win. 
It's that simple. But the things that Minnesota does wrong, their immaturity, their inability to work with one another in key moments, guys trying to be the man, that kind of thing. The fact that their coach hasn't reeled that in and got them guys to buy into what it is that they're supposed to be doing, that's the difference. Memphis buys into what they're doing. They know who they are. Desmond May does not believe he's John Morant. Dylan Brooks does not believe that he's John Morant. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the problem Toronto, the, 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 the Timberwolves appear to have right now. D'Angelo Russell doesn't understand that he's not Anthony Edwards, and Anthony Edwards may not understand that he's not Carl Towns, and that pecking order doesn't seem to be clear to those guys. And in key moments, in both this game and the last game, you saw that rear its ugly head. That's what I'm seeing. You know, coupled with other issues that just directly appear to have to do with the coach. So I hate to lay it all flat on him. It seems like this is a coach killing channel, but I just I just know what their responsibilities are. And you can tell when things have gone awry as it pertains to them. And that's what's going on here. And it's a shame because these are very two these are two very talented teams, two very young teams. They both have defensive players, they both have shooters, they both have all that you need to win this series. And that's why we are as far as we are, heading into a game six. So I, I'm thoroughly entertained. This is probably the best series the NBA has given us thus far in this in this these playoffs. And uh, I'm actually glad it's still going. I am glad it's still going. So that's about what I got, man. I'm going to get back to it. Um, of course, I still have to make a video on Miami and Atlanta. But I'm going to go watch the Pels right now, see if they can get one on the Suns and, and take a, take their game for it. Um, so this, this has been awesome, you guys. I appreciate you rocking with BDF44. This has been my reaction for that particular game. And I'm out.